We are at Burned Promontory Fort, so just up from the Calf Sound, and it is an Iron Age promontory fort. Uh, as you come up to it, we come up past a huge, great big bank, about five meters wide at its kind of base, that's built to cut off this promontory of land from everything else behind it. At some of the promontory fort sites, we can see that they have had stone facings added to them, and they might well have also had wooden structures, a kind of a palisade associated with them. Here, the bank hasn't been excavated, so we don't know precisely what it's like. As you walk towards it, there's also a slight rise in the landscape as you're nearing it, which may actually be a second bank associated with the promontory fort. And once you come over the bank into the promontory fort, you're in a relatively open area. There's lots of exposed rock, like the stuff I'm sat on here, some of which has cut marks that date to the Neolithic and the Bronze Age on it, but there's also a more open, grassy area. And a geophysical survey carried out by the Balown project found evidence that suggests there was round houses that were built here in the Iron Age as well, associated with the Promontory Fort. Promontory forts date to the Iron Age, so anywhere from around about 8600 BC, past that and up to the arrival of the Vikings. And promontory forts are quite common on the Isle of Man. They're all the way around the coastline, and there are lots of them that are really accessible on the Radnafalian, like this one. It's easy to get to and there's a nice path that takes you up here. Promontory forts are quite interesting to think about. In one sense, we could think about them as being an area that you've cut off from the rest of the Isle of Man. So we're creating an area where we could perhaps be defensively or living if there was some kind of threat to ourselves. But we could also swing around and think about them in the other direction. Are they protecting inlets and passages and bits of sea from other people as well? The answer is that it's quite hard to tell, but these sites get reused later as watch and ward sites as people are uh, defending and um, monitoring shipping and the movement of goods in later periods as well. So easy to think about in both directions, something cut off from the land and something also protected from the sea. So the cop marks that we've got up here probably date to maybe the late Neolithic, but more likely the early Bronze Age, so maybe around about 2000 BC. The promontory fort is at least a thousand years later, probably a bit more than that actually. So when people were coming here to build the promontory fort, these features already existed. And we don't know what they thought about them or whether they were something that attracted them here to this place. Probably in both cases, the thing that's attracting them really is this landscape location where we've got the stunning views in multiple multiple directions on a clear day you can see out across to England from here and the same stunning location that made people want to build rock art contributes to why you would put a promontory fort here too. There are quite a lot of promontory forts on the Isle of Man and they're often, in, particularly around the Santon area, they're quite closely clustered together. One of the questions is where they were all occupied at the same time. Did people live in them year round or did they go to them at particular times of the year or perhaps in particular kind of defensive situations? Are they about kind of creating a defensive situation or are they about marking parts of the landscape as belonging to people? And these are kind of open questions. A number of the ones in the kind of Santon and, and near Castleton Town area have had excavations in the 70s and the 80s associated with them which helps us understand them better but we still have a lot of open questions about their precise function. The thing I really like about the promontory forts is a whole pile of them are really accessible on the Radnafolian. You can walk, take a walk and some of them are quite in quite steep places but others of them are on really accessible land and you can walk through them and think about what life was like 2000, 2500 years ago on the Isle of Man. These are places where people lived their lives and they're places that you can go today and I think the kind of the, the chance to reflect upon that relationship with place and with landscape is something that really strikes you when you're in these kind of really beautiful locations and thinking about how they've been used and reused over hundreds of years. Thousands in fact. Mm -hmm.